Hey friends, Donovan Bankhead here with Springfield Music. I'm gonna talk to you a little bit today uh, and dive deep into the AR Resonance threaded receiver, threaded mouthpiece receiver system. Very hard for me to get a good photo to show you what this thing does. But I would just wanna spend some time so, you can, so we can kind of go over what this does. So this is a feature that are in all of their current trumpet models, I believe. And uh, so rather than every time I do a review, try to go in depth with it, I'm gonna just leave this up here as a separate video for anyone who may be interested in it. So let's talk a little bit about this. So first of all, what you have here is, is of course, you have, this is the lead pipe and then this is the receiver. And probably if you're spending seven grand on a trumpet, you probably know all this stuff. And this is threaded. That gives you a couple different options for what you can do for backboard systems. So the first thing you can do is if you wanna use the AR Resonance's threaded backboards, then you can get back bores that will give you a different amount of gap, which I'll talk about here in just a second, and different shapes and sizes, small, large, medium, whatever, for that give you a different tone. And more, most importantly for me, I really think about thinking about, about my intonation as I get in the upper and lower registers. And when you do that and you combine it with a top, like you can do here, like any other modular mouthpiece system, then essentially, because it's threaded, you have an integrated system here of which there is less vibrational or light, less uh, vibration excuse me less energy lost to vibration through this threaded system than there would be on the traditional system where we're just putting a mouthpiece into a, a receiver blank and just like putting it in with tension with this threading this coupling it's more coupled and it's like it's connected deeper through uh, which essentially gives you a more resonant, efficient system. To me, I feel like it adds roughly 10%. And I, what I really should say is it doesn't necessarily add 10%. It makes it 10% more efficient, which means I feel like I can back off by about 10% and get the same output here, which for me as a player means that I have longer, I have more endurance and better range because I'm not having to work so hard on this end to get the desired result on this end. Does that make sense? So with the threaded receiver system, you can use backboards from AR Resonance and he makes uh, small, medium, and large backboards. And then he also makes a his standard uh, backboard, which is sort of a versatile, uh, you know, kind of all do, does everything. He also makes a classical backboard, which uh, does, is designed to kind of more emphasize maybe those uh, types of attacks that you'd want for classical. Uh, and that general sound, which is slightly fuller, maybe warmer. So uh, you can, that's one option. The other option you have is these threaded mouthpiece receiver, and these are basically adjustable gaps. This one says two, and I currently, for this particular model, I have five of these, um, one through five. I have four of these. <laughs> no. Just threw one across the floor here. Uh, five of these, numbered one through five, and each one of those adjusts the gap on the uh, mouthpiece. And so um, if you go with like a one, though, and if you really can't, they're hard to, you can't really tell by looking at them, but if you go with like a one, it's gonna give you the least amount of gap between the end of your mouthpiece back bore and the lead pipe. Now, why would we want that? Okay, there's a couple things. For one thing, many of us, if we've spent much time with backboards and mouthpieces, have recognized that sometimes you'll have a mouthpiece that you love and then you put it in a trumpet receiver and it just bottoms out and doesn't uh, seat properly. When you can adjust the gap of that, you can put more gap in so that it doesn't bottom out. So that's kind of a handy thing to have for that. But really where it matters as a player from the playing end of it is you want a certain amount of gap between the end of your mouthpiece and the beginning of the lead pipe. And each player may, may prefer a slightly different amount of gap, but you generally want some amount of gap, okay? The least, if you, the, when, you, when you decrease the gap to something very small, the instrument becomes very flexible. You feel like, oh man, like I can just slur all over the place, everything's super easy to play. Like you just really feel that like, you know, it's just like the instruments on ice. Like it's just super, lip slurs are easy as you go through your, your uh, 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 iron studies or 
uh, you know, any of doing your Clark technical studies, you'll be like, oh gosh, this, these are so easy. Like I'll just fly through them this way with that smaller gap. The sacrifice for that <laughs> is accuracy, especially in the upper register, can become pretty tricky because all the notes are very, very close together. It's almost like playing French horn up there. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to do that, uh, especially on trumpet in that range. Um, and so if you increase the gap, it sort of widens the slots for each note, especially in the upper register, making the notes slightly further apart and makes them easier to identify and play cleanly, like pick them out cleanly. And so most of us are you know, having to kind of find like where's that middle ground that I feel comfortable with. I have the flexibility that I need to move around my horn easily the way that I'd like to, but that I have the security that I need so that I can accurately pick out notes and be as accurate as I can be as a trumpet player, which is already sometimes challenging enough, or maybe it's just me. Anyway, so anyway, so with these threaded mouth uh, 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 receiver systems, we can just put those into there, and then at that point, they will then work with any back bore. So, and uh, let's see, yeah, that one's seated. I have another one that sometimes won't seat in here, uh, but so just to show you, but that one seats. But we're gonna find, matter of fact, I'll just throw one of these in. So we'll likely find that with that very small gap there, so that's the number one receiver, yep. I'm gonna probably find that the instrument feels very like slippery and efficient, um, but I'm, I might find the slotting of notes to be difficult. Like I just, I just release the air and it, everything just slides through. <laughs> so I didn't have too much trouble with the accuracy there, but I am paying very specific close attention to it. Okay. Well, I thought for sure I would chip that B and didn't. Um, uh, that was just luck. So, uh, but that's like, so that's the one. Most players are probably gonna find they're gonna like a two or three. That's probably the most popular combination. Let's try a five. So here's the five. There you go. Five is gonna give us the most gap. So we're gonna have the biggest gap between the end of my receipt, uh, mouthpiece uh, back bore and the lead pipe. <laughs> you can hear already I'm struggling with that slur. It's not impossible, like I can totally, I could totally play with this, but it is just more difficult. Uh, the notes, uh, the gaps are wider, the notes feel further apart. Certainly that felt a little more secure, but to me that's much, much too, too much gap. Um, most people with this normal sized backboard that like is fitting properly in an instrument probably would never choose the five. I bet you end up using the five if you've got a mouthpiece that is going too far in and you're needing to use that five to make it function more like a three because of your particular backboard. Does that make sense? Um, so let's try the three. That's the two, which is actually the one I play with the most, but here's the three. Right in the middle, this might be the Goldilocks here. We had one that was too far apart, one that was too close together. Much better. Yeah, so that one 
still feels smooth. It, it definitely, it feels like that buttery, slippery smooth compared to the five. I'm picking that B because that's a note I tend to miss a lot. <laughs> so I still get the security that I need, but the flexibility that, that I desire um, with that, um, uh, that, that particular number three with this combination. So that's a look at the, the threaded mouthpiece system and the adjustable gap. Uh, really cool feature on AR Resonance, something you really don't find on pretty much any other maker. Super, super cool system. These are available at Springfield Music. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me, Donovan at springfieldmusic.com. Take care.